Welcome back to the top of the fourth. And if this is your first time visiting, welcome. Baseball's a team game. You win as a team. You lose as a team. You also do so many things together. Eddie Clarence Murray, born February 24th, 1956, nicknamed Steady Eddie, is a former Major League Baseball first baseman, designated hitter, and coach. He spent most of his MLB career with the Baltimore Orioles, and he ranks fourth in team history in total games played and hits. Though Murray never won an MVP award, he finished in the top 10 in MVP voting several times. Murray was the eighth child of 12 and as a child, he did not have to go far for a pickup baseball game. The games were quite fierce, and his older brothers never let him win. Murray played Little League Baseball under coach Clifford Prelude, an ex-Dodger minor leaguer. In his Hall of Fame induction speech, Murray thanked Prelude for teaching him not just the game of baseball, but love for the game as well. Murray attended Lock High School in Los Angeles, where he batted 500 as a senior, and was a teammate of Ozzie Smith. Murray was selected by the Baltimore Orioles in the third round of the 1973 amateur draft. He made his Major League debut on April 7, 1977, and played in 160 games for the Orioles in his first season, where he hit 283 with 88 RBI, 27 home runs, 29 doubles, and 173 total base hits. On November 21st, 1977, Eddie was named American League Rookie of the Year. In the 1978 season, he played in 161 games, hitting 285 with 95 RBI, 27 home runs, 32 doubles, 174 hits, and was named to his first All-Star game and finished eighth in MVP voting. In 1979, he hit 295 with 99 RBI, 25 home runs, 30 doubles, and 179 total hits. He finished 11th in the MVP voting. He also played in his first postseason. In the 1979 America League Championship Series, he hit 5 for 12 with a 417 batting average, with one home run and five RBI as they beat the California Angels in four games. In the 1979 World Series, he hit 154 with one home run and two RBI as the Orioles lost to the Pittsburgh Pirates in seven games. In the 1980 season, Eddie hit 300 with 116 RBI, 32 home runs, 36 doubles, and 179 total hits. He finished sixth in the MVP voting that year. In 1981, Murray hit 294 with 78 RBI, 22 home runs, 21 doubles, and 111 total hits, while getting named to the 1981 All-Star Game and finishing fifth in the MVP voting. In the 1982 season, Murray hit 316 with 110 RBI, 32 home runs, 30 doubles, and 174 total hits. He was named to the 1982 Major League Baseball All-Star Game, along with being awarded his first ever gold glove and finishing second in the MVP voting. His 1983 season was more of the same dominance as he hit 306 with 111 RBI, a career-high 33 home runs, 30 doubles, and 178 total hits. He was named to the 1983 All-Star Game, along with winning a second consecutive gold glove and his first Silver Slugger award. He finished second in the MVP voting behind teammate Cal Ripken Jr. In the 1983 American League Championship Series against the Chicago White Sox, he hit 267, hitting one home run and three RBI, as the Orioles advanced in four games to go to the 1983 World Series. In that series, he hit 250 with two home runs and three RBI as the Orioles beat the Philadelphia Phillies in five games. This would be his only World Series crown. In the 1984 season, Eddie played in all 162 games, which marked a career high, while hitting 306 and 110 RBI, 29 home runs, 26 doubles, and 180 total hits. He was named to a fourth straight All-Star game while being awarded a third straight gold glove and second straight silver slugger award and finishing fourth in the MVP voting. In 1985, he hit 297 with 124 RBI, 31 home runs, a career high 37 doubles, and 173 hits. He was named to his fifth All-Star game while finishing fifth in the MVP voting. 
The 1986 season, he hit 305 with 84 RBI, 17 home runs, 25 doubles, and 151 total hits. He was named to the All-Star Game once again and would be his last selection until 1991. In 1987, he hit for 277 with 91 RBI, 30 home runs, 29 doubles, and 171 total hits. In the 1988 season, he hit 284 with 84 RBI, 27 doubles, and 171 total hits. Murray's relationship with Orioles management began to sour during spring training in 1986 when he accused team officials of pressuring him to return prematurely from an ankle injury. His request to be traded in late August of that year was fueled by criticism from team ownership who questioned his off-season work habits, defense, and lack of extra base hits, which some would take as an accusation of laziness. He was traded to the Los Angeles Dodgers for three players on December 4, 1988. The Orioles also paid $1 million of the $8 million he was owed for the final three years of his contract. The Baltimore Sun sports columnist Mike Preston called Murray's departure from Baltimore in 1988, quote, one of the lowest moments in the city's sports history, as sad as the Colts leaving for Indianapolis and as embarrassing as Colts officials allowing quarterback Johnny Unitas to wear a San Diego Chargers uniform, unquote. In his first season with the Dodgers, he hit for a career low 247 while having 88 RBI, 20 home runs, 29 doubles, and 147 total hits. In 1990, he improved to a 330 average while having 95 RBI, 26 home runs, 22 doubles, and 184 total hits. He was awarded the Silver Slugger Award for the third and final time while finishing fifth in the MVP voting and was second in voting for the batting title behind Willie McGee. The 1991 season was his last with the Dodgers. He hit 260 while having 96 RBI, 19 home runs, 23 doubles, and 150 total hits. He was named to the 1991 All-Star Game. On October 29, 1991, he was granted free agency. On November 27, 1991, Murray signed a two-year contract with the New York Mets. However, in Murray's two years with the team, the Mets finished with 90 and 103 losses respectively. He hit for 261 while having 93 RBI, 16 home runs, 32 doubles, and 144 hits in 1992. It wasn't all terrible with the Mets when on May 3, 1992, this happened. Fly ball, left field, and deep. Back is Gant against the wall. Out of here! Home run, Eddie Murray, and it's home run number 400 for his career. And the Mets lead it 7 to nothing. Gone with the wind. On this day, Eddie Murray became the 24th player in Major League Baseball history to reach 400 home runs. On November 1, 1993, he was granted free agency by the Mets. Murray was signed as a free agent by the then Cleveland Indians on December 2, 1993. In the 1994 season, he batted 254 with 76 RBI, 17 home runs, and 110 hits before the season was cut short due to the strike. In 1995, he batted 323 with 82 RBI, 21 home runs, and 141 total hits. 1995 would also be a special season for him when on June 30th, this happened. Eddie Murray sitting on 2,999. Another look, now the pitch. Murray hits a ground ball through the right side, in the right field, a base set. Eddie Murray has done it. The 20th player in baseball history to reach 3,000. And look and at the Indian the dugout. the Indians out of the dugout. And Eddie Murray has assured himself a spot at Cooperstown. On this day, Eddie Murray became only the 20th player in MLB history to reach 3,000 hits. In the 1995 American League Division Series, he hit 385 with one home run and three RBI as they swept the Boston Red Sox in three games. In the 1995 American League Championship Series, he hit 250 with one home run and three RBI 
as Cleveland beat the Seattle Mariners to advance to the 1995 World Series. In that series, he hit only 105 with 5 RBI, and Cleveland would eventually lose to the Atlanta Braves in six games. Murray's 1996 season was shared between two teams, Cleveland and Baltimore. He played a total of 152 games between both teams. He hit 260 with 79 RBI and 22 home runs, along with 147 hits. He played in 88 total games for Cleveland, hitting for 262 along with 45 RBI, 12 home runs, and 88 hits. Cleveland traded Murray back to Baltimore on July 21, 1996. He played 64 games with the Orioles, batting 257 with 34 RBI, 10 home runs, and 59 hits. Murray's career home run total reached a rare milestone when on September 6, 1996, this happened. This might be it. Wait a minute. It is. It's gone. Hey, 500 for Eddie Murray. On this day, Eddie Murray became the 15th player in Major League Baseball history to reach the milestone of 500 home runs. Eddie Murray joined Willie Mays and Hank Aaron as the only players ever to have reached at least 500 home runs and 3,000 or more hits in their careers. Rafael Palmeiro, Alex Rodriguez, Albert Pujols, and Miguel Cabrera have since joined the club. After being granted free agency by the Orioles, Murray was signed as a free agent by the Anaheim Angels on December 18, 1996. He played 55 total games in the 1997 season, 46 with the Angels and 9 with the Dodgers. He batted 219 with 15 RBI, 3 home run and 35 hits. He was released by the Angels on August 14. On August 20, he was signed by the Dodgers. In 9 total games with the Dodgers, he batted 286 with 3 RBI and two hits. On October 30th, he was granted free agency. He retired after the 1997 season with 500 home runs. As of the date of this video, Mickey Mantle is the only switch hitter who has hit more home runs with 536. After playing 21 years in the majors, Eddie went on to have various coaching roles for the Orioles, Indians, Dodgers, and Mets. Baltimore City Recreation and Parks established a nature center after receiving a generous donation from Eddie Murray. The center was dedicated in 1985 and was named after Eddie's mother, Carrie Murray. Miss Murray's gentle spirit and strength greatly influenced her 12 children. She instilled in them the importance of family, respect for nature, and a sense of responsibility, leadership, and accomplishment. The Nature Center hopes that the valleys by which Miss Murray lived her life will inspire others to fulfill her mission to care for nature and each other. In 2008, Murray released a charity wine called Eddie Murray 504 Cabernet, a nod to his 504 career home runs, with all the proceeds donated to the Baltimore Community Foundation. A bronze statue of Eddie Murray's left-handed hitting stance was unveiled at Oriole Park at Camden Yards on August 11, 2012. On July 27, 2003, Murray was inducted into Major League Baseball's Hall of Fame. He said that he was never about one person, but about the team. He thanked the sea of black and orange in the crowd and then pointed to the kids farthest in the back. More than 300 inner city little leaguers had come from Baltimore's Northwood Baseball League and told them that one day they would be here too. Thank you. Oh, nice little sea of black and orange out there. Wonderful thing. I was never one much on words. For me, to focus a lot on an individual. And that's not the way I learned to play the game. Baseball's a team game. You win as a team. You lose as a team. You also do so many things together. In 2010, Murray was named the fifth best first baseman in Major League history in the new Bill James historical abstract. To say that Eddie Murray had a great baseball career would be an understatement. He had a baseball career that few have ever had 
or will ever have. His career stats speak for themselves and will always be known as one of the greatest. If you've made it this far in the video, thanks. And if you like these types of vids, like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Thanks, and stay tuned.